Hello everyone, uh, my name's Katrina and you're watching the Irish Mummy channel. Um, so today I'm bringing you a quick video, hopefully because it's almost dark, um, showing you how to do a winter sewing technique that I learned about uh, probably on YouTube as well. But um, I actually didn't believe it would work in our climate at all, but I did try it last year on a couple of different things. Uh, and I've um, been bitten by the bug. Actually, it's a fantastic way of uh, growing uh, plants from seed and um, so easy and you don't need any specialist equipment whatsoever, which makes it even better again. Uh, so I give you a quick rundown of what it entails. So the winter sow method is suitable for perennial plants or hardy annuals. Um, anything that's cold tolerant normally uh, in your climate. So for me, I have a couple of different flowers that I want to try out and uh, vegetable wise, not a whole pile. I'm going to do coriander because I know it's um, cold tolerant. Um, some brassica plants, I can't remember what I brought out. I think I brought out cabbage. Um, peas actually, that's the other thing. Uh, and parsley, I forgot about it too. Um, so last year I done this with uh, Cranesbill geranium, uh, Globe Artichokes and Agastache and they all came on from seed. So um, you'll be coming along on the journey with me this year. Um, I'm going to very quickly show you the process. You won't actually believe how easy it is. So I'll bring you down here to the potting bench. So part of the beauty of this is that it uses something you already have or most people will already have your very uh, common milk bottle. You can actually use any kind of a bottle for this. And um, the milk bottle I find is just the handiest. It's not completely clear, so um, the sunlight is dispersed as it goes through it. And you have this handy handle here, which uh, you'll see it actually does come in useful later on. So these are some of the vegetables and herbs that I'm gonna be growing. Um, now these aren't pictorial packets as they call them. Um, so you'll have to use your imagination as to what to look like with the exception of the parsley. So curled parsley, very hardy uh, here in Ireland. So that should do well. Um, also doing cabbage. This is an early variety of cabbage. Um, I'm going to try broccoli. Now I obviously can start broccoli inside all and all that, but I just want to try it um, uh, with this method. Uh, and then herbs, I have sage, which the labels aren't even very good on them. Um, rosemary and coriander and then i'm also going to do um a mont 2 type pea this one's called oregon sugar pot um and this it can actually produce peas when it um, matures and they're peas that taste good a lot of the mont 2 varieties um the peas would not taste good when they mature but i'm only going to be sowing a few of these it's only for pods just to um throw into a store fry or something you're not be getting a huge harvest off these um, but I'm just making sure that it works for a start. Okay, so it's a very simple process. You get your milk carton. The first thing you do is you put holes in the bottom to allow for drainage. And this is just an ordinary kitchen scissors I'm using. So I'm just gonna stab it a couple of times. And it's quite easy to get the scissors through. And don't worry if it gets misshapen because you'll be able to fix it now in a wee minute. So there we are, four holes in the bottom. And then at the handle part here, I am going to put another hole in it. And then we're going to cut around, not fully. So we're going to cut around to the back, just to about there, uh, so that we end up with a type of a hinged lid on it. It opens up like that but it's still connected at the back so next thing we want to do is well we can fix any misshaping that happened down the bottom and then we're going to fill it with compost okay here we are we have it filled with compost i don't recommend seed pot, uh, compost for this um any sort of container or potting compost is your best bet for this uh, sewing method 
so I'm going to do the peas first. Uh, the secret as well is to not overcrowd the plants. So I'm really, I'm only going to be doing about six or eight plants in this. So just bringing you up closer there so you can see what I'm actually doing. I just have eight seeds uh, set out along there and I'm just going to push those down and cover them over ever so slightly. So now I'm just going to bring them outside and water them in and I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, we have it watered in now. We're going to put uh, one of these markers or, um, or labels inside. Let it fall. And then we are going to tape up our carton. Now this is probably the hardest bit of it because it can be hard just to get the plastic to line up right. Probably want about three hands for this job. There we are, very easy. Just make sure it's sealed all the way around um, so that moisture doesn't really get in. And very important, we're going to take off this top lid. <clears throat> so the whole idea is that this will go outside uh, and the rain will still be able to get in through the top. And God knows we have enough rain in this country that this will be sufficient to keep it watered until the plant starts to grow. Uh, and this one I'm actually going to label it on the outside as well so because I have the label inside and I don't intend to open this until it's ready for planting out um, I'm going to write a label on the outside as well okay so it's very important to actually um, put the label on the outside I'm actually going to write it on this tape uh, so this is peas now that is just a normal permanent marker so I am going to write it in case that fades, I'm going to write it with my UV resistant marker as well on the back here and hope it works. And I knew the propagator would come in handy for more than one, more than the obvious reason. Um, it keeps me lit here in the dark. So the advantages or the reasons why um, you would use this sewing method. Well, first of all, if you don't have a greenhouse space, um, you don't need a greenhouse for this. So we're going to leave these outside and they're going to um, <coughs> take off outside. Uh, the plant, the seed is going to grow in its own time when it's meant to grow. Um, so basically it's waking up at its natural time. 
Um, it's going to be a hardier plant because it's going outside and starting uh, in the normal outdoor temperatures. Um, if you know, if you start seeds inside, they can get leggy. Um, they're not getting enough uh, wind and stuff, and not getting enough movement. So the um, stems aren't very strong. Uh, whereas these ones, because they're going to be waking up outside, they're going to be good and sturdy plants. Um, and the other advantage is there is no pricking out if you sow thinly enough there's no pricking out and potting on which if you're a normal a regular seed, seed starter that can be quite a chore um, and then you're not really limited by space whereas in the propagator you're definitely limited by space and um, so several different reasons uh, why you might want to try this um, and please let me know down below if you've tried it before or if you're interested in trying it um let me know what you plan on sowing using this method um i'm going to go through all of uh, what i'm going to be doing now uh flowers wise and then i'll be able to show you them uh, probably in the morning i will show you where i'm going to situate them outside okay so i just laid out my flower seeds there some of them have the pictures on them some of them don't um so that's the one i tried last year that's the cranes bill geranium um lovely uh lavender purplish flower to it um and it done really well last year uh, so this year i'm also trying out um sorry you can't see that calendula um i'm hoping that will work and if not it doesn't matter like if it doesn't germinate i can just do them in the propagator as well or in the greenhouse uh ami madges a nice um filler plant for um cut flower arrangements uh, Agastaki, another one that I like to put in the garden. Very good for the bees. The bees love that one. Uh, and Alyssum, great filler for the borders in the summertime. And um, this is a nice pink variety. Uh, and again, this is actually a member of the brassica family. So if you know, uh, brassicas are quite cold hardy. So this will be ideal for use uh, sowing by the win winter sowing method. Uh, and then the last flower I have, no, sorry, not the last, the last picture packet I have is this Godisha. I've never grown this before, uh, but you can see um, right up here in the top corner, it calls, it says it's a hardy annual. So should be ideal for the winter sowing method. And then the other ones I have with no pictures, um, we have Nigella seeds that I've saved myself one year actually 2018 five years ago i hopefully they'll still be okay uh, and here i have four different varieties of delphiniums two different varieties of foxglove and you know foxgloves are something that will self seed around the garden themselves <coughs> so we're just taking a bit more control over it by doing it in the milk cartons um and then achillea uh, i have a pastel mix here of achillea which is yarrow and the uh, scabiosa pink cushion flower and this oh well let's see take that off it um pin cushion flower um which is another hardy plant uh perennial and this variety is an imperial mix so they're all different colors uh of pastels i think if i recall correctly um so th these are the flowers that i'm trying i've showed you the vegetables and herbs that i'm going to give a go at um, and I'll keep you updated as the season goes on. Um, so I really would encourage you to try this sewing method. Like I said, I didn't have much faith in it myself last year when I tried it, uh, but nonetheless, I had good success with it. Um, even one of the plants that I thought hadn't germinated towards the end of the summer, I realized it had actually germinated and hadn't been looked after at all with rain, uh, with water or anything else. Um, so that was quite a good success. So don't forget to hit the like button down below, uh, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell as well. That way you'll be able to come along on this journey and see the successes and failures from this winter sewing method. Um, and if you have any questions, don't be afraid to put them down in the comments below. I'll try to get to them uh, if you have any. Uh, and let me know as well if you have tried this method before or if from seeing what you've seen today you might be interested and like I said if you have any questions about what to try or what seed might succeed 
uh, don't be afraid to ask me in the comments down below too. So until the next video, thanks for watching and goodbye.